Moving over to the NBA, where the Los Angeles Lakers have had quite the offseason after acquiring Anthony Davis, turned them into the betting favorites to win the 2020 NBA Finals. They've lost to Marcus Cousins, possibly for the season, and in the last week they signed Jared Dudley and are reportedly working out Joachim Noah and Dwight Howard. Taylor, is this just a case of people getting way too far ahead of themselves on the Lakers, or did you expect something like this to happen at least by the early stages of the season where they'd face some kind of hardship and maybe come a bit back down to earth. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about the Lakers ad nauseum, and one of the things we have mentioned is the injury concern with this team. I wasn't necessarily thinking about Boogie, but he has been obviously injury injury prone the last couple of years. It was more about Anthony Davis, who has, I think, played 70 games like once in his entire career, and how LeBron had his first long-term injury last season. So... I didn't expect Boogie to get hurt, obviously, in the offseason. That's something you can't predict. But the betting odds were always a little optimistic with them. They always are with the Lakers. People like to go to Vegas and bet on the Lakers. So they're always a little bit inflated compared to where they should be. I don't think this really hurts their chances necessarily. Um, Cousins wasn't exactly a key cog with Golden State last season. We don't know if he's going to get back to that player he was before. It's um, obviously more uncertain now than ever. So. Regardless of who they sign, whether it's Dwight or Joe Kim Noah or Mo Spates or whoever, I think they'll be fine. I think they're still a close to lock to at least make the playoffs, which, you know, anything can happen once you get there. So I still wouldn't be betting on them at their current odds to win the title, but I don't think this really affects that either way. Well, I think you can say that Cousins' time as an all-star caliber player is over with. You know, these two injuries that he's had – in back-to-back seasons are brutal um, and it takes a long time to recover from and then get back to your form. You saw when he was at Golden State that he was not back. Maybe he has showed flashes of where he was as previously, but he wasn't back from his recent injury. And now you get a torn ACL on top of that. Like he's run into some bad luck. And, you know, as a Kings fan, I was a big fan of Boogie for a long time because he just had a lot of talent on the floor you know, we're not talking about personality or mentality or anything like that, but physical skills. Yeah, he, he was one of the best big men in the league. Um, as for the Lakers, you know, they still don't have a lot of depth. They can get all these scrubs they want to add to the team, and that's pretty much what they have to do. I mean, if they would bring Taylor and I on, you know, they'd pay us a lot less, and then maybe they can get, you know, another all-star down the year or something like that. But first of all, we never – none of us picked the Lakers to win even the Western Conference, they're not even going to win their division. They'll be lucky to get into the playoffs. I think they'll be lucky to get into the playoffs, especially with my Kings contending for that last spot. And the West is just deep. The West is just deep. You know, you're basically riding two two players thinking just because they're two great players, they're going to be able to beat, you know, any other team. I don't believe the Lakers have the depth to contend with any of the top teams in the West. I think the loss of Cousins is going to hurt because it's a knock against their depth. And at the very least, he has uh, compatibility on the floor with Davis, and they could have made you know a better tandem than anybody else they bring in. Yeah, I think the Lakers' betting odds are still way too high to win the title or even to make the playoffs. The Lakers are always overvalued. Stay away from them. If you want an L.A. team, pick the Clippers. I, I mean, I, I think that that's kind of an interesting point as far as it is a knock on their depth. And it kind of goes back to what we were talking about with the, San Diego, the Los Angeles Chargers a segment ago. I was talking about the, Melvin Gordon's holdout. The biggest knock it has is that it hurts their depth. And when, the, when you're a little bit thinner, those injuries, the, the, anything that might pop up if Anthony Davis had, does play, you know, misses 15 games as he seems to do most years if LeBron James goes down for a little bit they're back in the same position they were a year ago uh, just with the different roster so I, I none of us did pick the Lakers even after the free agency frenzy and those trades and everything was completed because we all looked around and we said yeah it's going to get them into the playoffs but that's you know there's still some really good teams there's still really strong teams in Denver and Houston Portland uh, the Golden State Warriors, if they get healthy by the playoffs, are still going to have Stephen Curry. So you never know. And the Clippers, obviously, with all the moves they made, are a, a very – and they were a playoff team last year, as we pointed out in previous videos. The Clippers are coming from a position where they were a playoff team. The Lakers are coming from a position where they've got 20 games to make up. 
So I think this is kind of a, I don't know if this necessarily hurts them more than it might open a few people's eyes to the fact that the Lakers are not this indestructible force. They're not going to win 73 games. They're not going to, you know, be up there with them with one of Jordan's Bulls teams or, or the Golden State Warriors the last few years. They, they could still contend. They still could go on a run and they could still win the NBA championship if things line up right postseason, but they've got to get there first. Uh, we've also seen at least one former player use this situation as a way of showing that at least in their mind, Carmelo Anthony has been blacklisted by the NBA. Royce White, who was a first round pick of the Houston Rockets in 2012, gave an interview with Fanatics View that seemed to blame LeBron James for not getting Melo onto that Lakers roster. Rick, do you agree with that sentiment? Should Carmelo Anthony be getting a workout? And do you think LeBron James is, would have anything to do with him not? First of all, who made these comments? Royce White. Exactly. Like, who cares what this guy has to say? What has he done in the NBA? What has he done in life? Okay. He's, uh, he's playing in the, the big three, that uh, yeah. the summer tournament. Yeah, we can play in the big three, okay? <laughs> we so, are the big three. Exactly. So this this guy, he really is just trying to use this attention to get a sound bite, to get some of his own buzz and stuff. That's Carmelo Anthony's done, okay? he He's past his prime. He's been on, I don't even know how many teams in the last several years, four teams. Uh, nobody wants him. <laughs> if four of the, what, 32 teams in the league don't want him, what makes someone think someone else can just come right in and say and, and pick them up? Just because the Lakers need players, why would they want a headache like Carmelo? Why would they want to bring in somebody who's ball dominant and it doesn't make the team better? And who might want more money than he's worth? Like, it's all pointless. This guy just wants his own uh, soundbite. He wants to be relevant. He's a nobody, in my opinion. His opinions don't even matter. I don't think LeBron James is doing it. I thought, first of all, if LeBron James thought Carmelo could help the team, Carmelo would at least have a tryout. I mean, that's, I think that's the bottom line right there. And I think, but not just with him, but I think that's the whole Lakers front office. They're grabbing at anything right now. It's like they're throwing at the wall and see what sticks. If they thought Carmelo could stick, they would throw him against the wall too. The guy's done. His time with the NBA is over with. He should be in the big three or in China or somewhere else. I, I can't – you know what? Now that I think about it, this story just drives me crazy. Who cares about Carmelo Anthony, right? Who cares? Just because someone's not good enough to play in the league doesn't mean they're blackballed. It means they suck. Uh, two quick corrections. Blacklisted. Uh, and the, uh, the fact that he's played for a handful of teams, I mean, if you look at that Lakers lineup, LeBron James has played for three different teams four different times. He's been – he was moved from Cleveland to Miami, from Miami to Cleveland, from Cleveland to L.A. So he's yeah, technically he – He went there because he's great. Carmelo went because he sucks. I get that there are differences. Boogie Cousins has played on three teams in the state of California. What's so? So it's – I, I don't think that playing for multiple teams is necessarily an issue. I mean, the dude that the Atlanta Hawks got in that whole trade with the pick that started in L.A. went through New Orleans, that kid has technically been part of three franchises in his career, and he's yet to play a game. So he hasn't, he hasn't proved out. that he sucks yet. Once he proves he sucks, he'll be with Carmelo. Blacklisted, black ball, black whatever. <laughs> Just wanted to point that out that playing for multiple franchises doesn't necessarily make you a better or worse player uh, one way or another. Taylor, do you want to add anything on this one? I don't think he's being blacklisted. Um, if he was able to adapt his game like Vince Carter has, he would be on a team. It's pretty much as simple as that. Vince Carter went from being pretty much the same thing as Carmelo Anthony for years to becoming a beloved old grizzled teammate that bounces around and has a jolly old time, and the fans love him everywhere he goes now. He's just in Atlanta because he wants to be. And Melo could do that. He's, I think he's good enough if he, if he wants to be to still be a contributor in the NBA. It's just that he's always been this guy that has to get buckets, which is fine. There's just not as much room for that nowadays, especially on a team like the Lakers, who do not lack for scoring options with Anthony Davis now coming in there. Um, so there's not even a fit with the Lakers. Like if Melo is going to go anywhere – it's probably not there. I could see a team giving him a tryout. I think he's good enough to be in the NBA. It's just he's shown a refusal to change his game. 
we saw him play 10 games with the Rockets last year for a reason. Like they cut bait pretty much as soon as they could. And this was a team that's been chasing him for like a decade. And 10 games was enough for Daryl Moore to be like, all right, that's enough of that garbage. So I think that's pretty telling. I don't think um, Royce White matters either. So it's a non-story. Melo will land somewhere if he's willing to show that he can be a good teammate, which we haven't seen yet. Never. I, I think that's fair. I mean, if, if you can adjust, you can stay in the league. But it's, it's hard to see a guy who has played that style for so long. And I, Vince Carter's a great comparison and a great example of a player who could be in the position of Carmelo Anthony, probably for a few years now could have been, but adapted. And he found he, – he basically realized that because he was no longer going to be – Vince Carter on the Toronto Raptors, that he found a way to become Vince Carter, who is still an asset to an NBA team. Uh, exactly. With the Kings, it was a locker room presence. Uh, it was a veteran to help lead the young team. When's the last time anybody said Carmelo was a veteran presence, great for the locker room, and helped to lead young players on a team? I don't remember ever hearing that. Just another reason why the bum's not in the league. The Knicks probably said something like that at his introductory press conference, you know, trying to sell that, you know, to their fans. <laughs> but they also said, well, they probably said that about a lot of players. So Andrea Bargnani, yeah. <laughs> Basically anybody. And then said the exact opposite about them when they dumped them off for nothing after, yeah. you know, winning nine games for a year. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that segment from the Odds on Favorites podcast. If you did, there's plenty more where that came from. Click on the link on your screen now to be taken to the complete podcast from this week or check out the channel to find the other individual segments. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe to the Odds on Favorites YouTube channel for plenty more sports and sports betting picks, tips, and how-to guides.